Okay, guys, a pretty good day of trading. I was uh, I wanted to record a couple of trades today, but I was uh, working with several. I had two clients in here with me, just didn't get the chance. Um, they were here by appointment, and wasn't fair for me not to spend time with them. And uh, Robin Darius, I think, had 10% of the population of DC metro area in the office today, so it was just a hectic noisy noisy office today so we gapped up this morning and we consolidated and then in the afternoon we began moving higher uh, days like this it's sometimes tough for traders to figure out what I'm doing here is sometimes tough for traders to figure out which way the market's gonna break or gonna rally or break down and you have a uh, what I just did was put two lines on the range of the opening range. So in other words, whatever happens during the, the range during the 10.30 period, I'm on the East Coast, so the first hour, in other words. Um, some people call it initial balance. If you're, This is just what I'm sh going to show here is for people who aren't using our indicators. Okay, this is... Uh, Put your two lines there and just wait when you get this gap and you get this tight range action and just wait if you're looking just for one or two high probability trades wait and wait for the market to break out of that initial range once it breaks out of that initial range then look for trade so you you would have in part of trading is being patient especially for new traders there's no need to over trade so just be patient and do a couple of high probability trades and take off but here we tested it we moved back in it Okay, we pretty much during lunchtime we tested the low and we started moving back and we tested it and this is a good reason why you shouldn't be trading breakouts unless you have a lot of good tight filters to trade breakouts here. So we tested it, we probed it, we pushed back down and then we broke out of it here. We break out of it here on the test. It's an excellent place to take a long trade. Okay. You tested we tested that area. Um, you could have gotten long around this area, okay? You could have gotten long anywhere around this area and just scalp that. And that's just one high probability trade that you could have done during the day. This, that's for uh, <clears throat> for anybody who's trading based on any platform, not necessarily using our indicators. Another so another tip I want to, it's not really a tip, so I don't, another possibility that may be useful for you I want to show you is that if you're trading index futures, okay, keep an eye, let's say you trade ES, keep an eye on YM. If you're trading YM, keep an eye on ES, or if you're trading NQ, keep an eye on ES and YM. These three instruments, you can throw TF in there or EMD in there as well. For example, let's say you're trading ES and you have all, you have five variables or five conditions that need to be valid in order for your trade setup to be triggered. Let's say four of them on ES are valid, but your fifth one doesn't come in, doesn't occur in other words, and um, you miss a trade like this, okay? And so you go back to the table and you say, well, I need to catch these trades, I need to do this. One simple way is to let's say four variables or four conditions are met okay and the fifth one happens in YM but it doesn't happen in an instrument that you prefer to trade ES for example okay so these are, I'm just showing you this as an example this is a value chart this is a value chart this one is based on YM this one is based on ES so you don't let's say you're one of your variables or conditions is uh, a reading below minus eight you don't get it in ES Okay, but you do get it in YM. In other words, yes, didn't give you that. So your fifth variable or fifth condition was validated by YM. This is called simply market intermarket analysis. So with two instruments like YM or ES that are high, highly correlated, it's perfectly well to do, perfectly valid to approach it in the manner I just mentioned. This will add. This will. This is just one technique that you could use to make sure that you don't miss nice trades. Okay. So now let's move on to what happened today. We opened up, and this is the volume breadth for this is this part for those of you who are using our indicators. Volume breadth 
as you can as you know this is very very bullish we've stayed up there all day long we had the gap opening we had the tight range volume breath kept on staying there the next clue was uh, tick bias which is this line here okay so what happened was this is the start of today notice how it's been green and it stayed green all day long okay so you co the combination of this and this that's pretty much all you needed to know to understand what the bias was so these two indicators pretty much worth their weight in gold today the next clue was as we tested the lower range the low part of the range the initial range uh, notice how ES started putting lower lows in here volume index did and that's this indicator here started putting in divergences okay that's a huge clue so the third thing is something common sense the moves gonna happen either in the morning or in the afternoon and when it happens in the afternoon it's gonna begin right after lunch around 12:30, 1 o'clock and uh, usually it occurs right around 1 to 2.30 anywhere between that time range and so this is a trade I personally took a trade here I was using Z10 oscillator my long entry was confirmed and I got long at 1071 working with clients I didn't get a chance to record it not fair to them so I got in here and I was just watching once we broke out of the developing value area okay once we started pushing beyond that took some profits here okay just a little bit beyond this and pretty much put a stop in and just started working with the clients and giving my attention to them which they helped me a lot because when then I don't have to micromanage it micromanage my trades and pretty much got out at the end of the day so it was a nice trade the key for me today was volume breadth the tick the tick bias and as I said with volume I saw the action on volume index and of course my entries were right off of the Z10 I'll say so whenever I'm busy working with clients I try to make my trades easy just throw on an oscillator that I like and get my entries that way it's a very easy way for me to get into a trade uh, that's pretty much it uh, so let's see what happens tomorrow's last day trading for this week hope everybody had a good day today and talk to you next time